，在丁马路我第一次租自己的家，我只是一个房间而已，其他是工作地方啊。啊，我以前在这边做服装啦，小型的服装店啦、啊，差不多有五十年前。<笑>我以前这边是啊两层楼的，我住在楼上，我有十多辆真车。很多工人在这边做。十年以后，那个物主就收回那个物主喽，我就另外买物主了。买物主就没有再做生意了了，开始结束。就那慢，我开始做那个 event 啦，这样啦，生意不大好啦。一个银行借，银行说。要担保人，那物质把它卖掉了，那个钱拿来做生意哦。我买空都住好多年，我卖掉不不是租物质哦，希望它的房价跌了才再去买咯。就是等等等等到完蛋了，住这边一年，这边住一年。那你那边人真做咯。病毒害很多年轻人去租屋子，变成竞争，我们就租不到了。好像一个人一个房间哈，他至少是要算一千，如果两个人他至少要千三、千四，你的千五，水电费要算一百五，总共大概千六这样了，太贵了。以前呐、啊，顶多是千一、千二而已啦。你年纪大了，人家也不大欢迎。When a person is homeless in Singapore, the assumption is that he or she must have done something wrong in his life. It's an individual problem. But we now know that it's a more complex issue. 知道合同就完了，就不要租了。哪里就哪里住了。在这边了。Group really, just ask them how they are and then what kind of help we need. We are a team of volunteers befriending rough sleepers. We actually go out in the night because they will appear at their sleeping spot only at night. We befriend 16 to 20 rough sleepers every week. The purpose is to ask them what's the reason for them sleeping outside and then see what we can help them with. The surprising thing about homelessness is the amount of people in the community who are willing to help the rough sleepers. Almost every night we have befrienders on the street reaching out to the homeless. I'm shocked that actually the rough sleeper, many of them refuse help. So the befrienders just have to keep on working, working with them. So could be days, could be months, could be years. We are going to find Mr. Tan. He has no money, he has no job, he has no place to stay. 去那个二零六那边住，如果有地方，你 OK 吗？我跟不认识的人住好像很危险的。<笑>这里不是更危险？连有厕所冲凉会比较方便。Some of the rush people do not want to get a rented flat because they worry about the other partner fight with them and cannot get along with uh with them. And then there are a lot of rules for rough sleeper to actually to rent a flat. They rather just sleep outside. Sleeping. Right now it's already 11.54. Next day, around 3.30, he will be waking up to bring the cupboard. It's almost uh, two years already we've been in touch with him. But he say it's good to spread out everything untidily so that people will not steal his thing. 
all these are his also. Mr. T actually has a house. Even he has a family who can take care of him. But because he feels that some people are stealing his cupboards, so that's why he prefers to stay here and uh, taking care of his cupboards. It's important uh, for us not just to uh, look for a house or a rented flat, but it's actually root of the problem for this rough sleeper. So our site have come up with uh, a plan whereby the town council will have a place for him to store the thing and then from there, when the collector comes, just pick it up from there and buy over. They will give him the money instead. Then he will not be sleeping down here. Hello, hi. hi. Hi, good evening. So sorry to disturb you. Yeah, yeah we are social worker from Marine Parade Family Service Centre. I want to go to Sharifa. Okay, okay. So you, you are already known to uh, Sharifa already? Yeah, yeah. So now she's helping you? La. Yeah. Okay. Because I apply uh, Ojin Board. Uh. So the Ojin Board say must apply your wife on the part. Uh. I apply already. Three okay. times or four times. Also reject. Only how? We outreach to Rough Sleepers at East Coast Park on a monthly basis. Our goal is to help them to have a place of their own. At East Coast Park, there is camping sites where Rough Sleepers could actually set their tents. It's easier to pass off as a regular camper. Please check. Oh, please check. That's why people all pack up. Please come. Okay. It's Singapore. Yeah. It's Singapore. Why do you go no house? Mm. Oh. Yeah. You cannot sleep here. How you say you cannot sleep? Mm. They know how to sleep where, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where are you sleep? Tell me. Rough sleeping in Singapore is not against the law. What we do have are laws that actually regulate maybe behaviours of rough sleepers. For example, things like unauthorised use of public spaces. We have laws that say that you need a permit to camp. If somebody thinks that you're a public nuisance, then there's the Miscellaneous Act which covers public nuisance is there. If the public complains, then often the rough sleepers will then be asked to move away by perhaps the police. I think I don't have anything to say. Sure, yes. You're yeah. always free to call us. The number is on the mm. back here. La. Yeah, number here and then address here also and our opening timings. La. Some of them are resistant to service because they could have bad previous experiences with services and uh, they feel that their issues are too difficult to solve. There are also some of them who actually chooses not to divulge their information. Yeah, this one for you, but small thing, small gi huni. Okay, never mind, it's okay. Nah, this no one for you. Yeah. You still have the blanket, right? Yeah, hey. Mr. Hamad was uh, rough sleeping behind the supermarket. So that day, say the rental flat, right? Yes. Yeah. If if you want a loan, a bit difficult lah. This one, a lot of rules ah. He doesn't want to stay with anybody. So this is our problem. This is uh, the Singapore's uh, rules ah, that they, for rental flat you need actually two to stay together to apply for it. We will also try to persuade and change uh, Mr. Hamad's mindset lah to maybe reduce his expectation. <laughs> I know. We also want you to go to a place uh, so that you don't need to sleep outside. We also worry about your safety, that you are sleeping under the tree. Some That's why. Very good uh, for me. Huh? At the time we stay kampong sleep, uh, can very long life. Uh. <laughs> when we first met Mr. Hamad, he is really very relaxed. To the point, I feel that he is too relaxed. So a lot of issues that we think is a problem to him is, it's okay, he can wait. Whenever we go out and say, look, it's not good for you to be sleeping on the street, what comes to mind? Government wants to get you off the street because you spoil the landscape, you know. Yeah, but actually, important thing is to look at it as, it's for their safety, for their well-being, for their health, that we are trying to get them off the street. Hi. 
How have you been? Long time never see you, ah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've been here so. Remember yeah, me I, not? I, Maybe I, not, lah. I've got a connection. Nine months, maybe. How are you? My my leg only, lah. They say, look like slow, swollen, no. A bit swollen on the top. Yeah, yeah. Been doing night walks since 2021. I walk with our community partners once every couple of months. Uh, for him, he has uh, gotten a HDB application successfully. Oh, yes. So he has to wait about three to four months, right? Oh. Then after that, um, he can move in ready. There are rough sleepers distributed all over Singapore. Some places is more concentrated and dense than the others. You will find congregations in the town area, central area, because it's close to their workplace. For example, they may sleep near an office building because they're actually doing cleaning job for the office building. Now I'm doing to clean all my birds every one week, one time. I changing the water and the food, give the bird happy, and then everything is very clean, and then it can mochi. Ah, tido dengan awak nyer burung. Kalau tinggal sini, tak payah gunakan transport. Sini apa ya, nak pergi gantung burung awak dalam kaki je. Senang. Safe transport. He rough sleep at this place. Partly is because he really loved the birds and because he was uh, working at the supermarket. So he thought it's very near to his working place. So we're now at the higher floors of a multi-storey car park. So this is also typically where you might find a rust sleeper. So we're now at the higher floors of a multi-storey car park. So this is also typically where you might find a rust sleeper uh, because it's simply quieter. So you could possibly see rust sleepers sticking out at corners of the multi-storey car park. Or perhaps even, you might even find some rust sleepers in the stairwells, all right? They would just lay their sleeping mats or their cardboards right here and the belongings over there and that's how they actually get through the night. So typically, void decks are also spaces where we can possibly find rust sleepers. This is a quieter spot. It's away from the lift lobby, it's away from the mailboxes. The riser, cabinet, rust sleepers. I've seen some of them uh, place their belongings when they go out for work in the daytime as well. So in our amenities like the CCs, right, uh, we do find some of these charging ports. Some are in non-descript corners like this. They're very resourceful in the sense that uh, they do find such uh, charging sockets uh, in order to charge their devices. Quite a number of paper cardboards, um, yes. bags as well. Yeah. Um, all these are signs of you know someone oh, that may potentially rust sleeping. Yeah. Um, but the person is not here right now, la. Do you think we can check with the neighbors there? Hello, Hi. uncle. Hello. Hello, uncle. Hi, evening. How are you? Yeah. 
Okay, uh. yeah. Yeah, sorry, we are actually volunteers. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, we are asking Uncle, the pavilion, right? Do you know who's uh, over there? The yes. auntie, auntie. This is not a rental house. Then we stay at Boy Deck. Uh. Sekarang awak mat uh, tak ada rumah. Tidur empat luar kurang-kurang enam tahun. Dalam seminggu awak mat ambil air kurang-kurang uh, dua kali ke tiga kali saja. Isi dua botol untuk cuci tangan dengan berus gigi cukup. Untuk tiga hari cukup boleh makan. Bini kalau beli untuk air untuk minum, kurang-kurang satu minggu boleh tahan. Tak sama air dia untuk buat minum. Pasal Mama tak masak. Ha, kalau macam air beli dekat Giant, ha, boleh minum, senang. Ha, tiap-tiap minggu ha, bayar RM5.30. Ini Mama rasa beli besar macam gini lebih murah. The lock is my own lock. I lock because I get my thing, everything locked. Everything, my shirt, all, and trousers I put inside. Uh, this place belong to town council. Lucky, never disturb. After disturb, I also problem. No, because never let him know. After he know, my thing, all everything must bring up. Ahmad tak ada tempat nak charge handphone. Ahmad selalu charge handphone dekat cleaner punya stesen. Ini jam cleaner semua dah balik. Kira dah tak ada orang. Kalau tak ada orang, dah baru charge. Kalau tinggal macam ini, tak boleh. Handphone mesti hilang. Sekarang dah charge handphone, sekarang Ahmad nak pergi dalam. Ahmad nak pergi mandi. Sebelum mandi, kalau ada barang apa-apa, dan -apa, ini semua kotor, toilet semua kasi bersih. Dah semua dah bersih, awak baru mandi. Kaci tutup, jadi baju amat. Takut aircon punya habuk, takut jadi kuman. Nanti kena semua, badan semua gatal-gatal. Ini air kencing amat. Nanti amat nak buang. 
yang ada kali dah tak boleh tahan. Dan okay. atas kencing, ini timbai je. Ha, jadi untuk kalau betul-betul nak terkencing, tak boleh pergi toilet, pergi sini, kencing pakai botol ni kan. Kalau buang dekat logang, nanti bau. Kalau buang dekat rumput, tak bau. Tapi ini cuci, nanti kalau dah kotor, tukar baru lah. Kalau orang dah biasa kena batu, ha, jadi orang takut. Jangan sampai kena tiga kali. Nanti kalau kena tiga kali, kena operasi lagi susah. Zhou 雨傘是前兩天一直腳痛星期四大概兩次這邊跟Mr.Hall 他们电房里面发动机不能够进去晚上这边有灯吗我们看到这边可以休息就好了不要露天就好了我们一个变桶就不用跑这样远收在箱里面要尽量要自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自己自
So you can see on the floor there is uh, all the markings. Actually, we have demarcated spaces for each of our stayers. It will be about from here all the way to about here. Yeah. So it's about a three by three meter space. S3Ps provide short-term overnight accommodation. So these are, these are all uh, premises that are not owned by government, but uh, really owned by the organisations themselves. How we look for S3P operators is actually based on our understanding of where the distribution of rough slippers are. But not every premises owner that we approach are willing to open up their premises. They, they have their own reasons. So it's really out of the goodwill of the premises owners who feel that I'm willing to help uh, rough slippers. The shell is only open from 5 p.m. all the way to 7 a.m. The S3P operators decide the operating hours that they can afford based on the primary function of their premises. So, if they run a kindergarten and the kindergarten class starts at 7, the rough slippers will have to vacate the place latest probably by 6.30. In Singapore, if we compare it from 2019 to 2021, the total number of homeless people on the whole has remained constant. So it's just a group of rough sleepers who are sleeping on the streets, moving into shelters. If you look at some counts that have been done in the region during, during 2021 as well, Tokyo as a city, they counted about 700 rough sleepers. So I think then our numbers are comparable to Tokyo. The issue here for me about numbers is not so much in terms of comparing numbers with other cities, but more about whether the numbers within Singapore itself are actually increasing or decreasing. my spot. Everyone is looking at a spot when you first day come here. Everybody might be listening, but it's your own decision. Chase my food, my if I eat and watch my show. This is for where I put my dirty clothes and everything. I'm like, first thing I do is I go shower. I don't hang my laundry, I just wash them and put it on the dryer and dry them. Sometimes I feel very lazy. So I just put my laundry like that and then I just lie down like that. Very comfortable. You must try it one day at your house. Sometimes I even forget to even charge my phone. Then early in the morning, I was like, oh, this 11% of me. I'm I go to my friend's house and charge. I working uh, this part time job. Uh. Packing uh, inside the giant. Uh. Work is really important to me because I want to support my family in Bandung, Indonesia. Generally, when the stairs come in, uh, we'll tell them that this is a two-week stay. 
two weeks is also just an arbitrary uh, number that we uh, put, you know, not too long, not too short. Uh, there's enough space and time for them to rest, uh, to work on their case goals. Whether is it to enter into a HDB rental flat uh, or open market rental, uh, it could be reconciliation back to family. If we allow them to stay indefinitely, S3Ps are free. So our rough people will just carry on staying in those premises without moving. We need to move people so that we can clear the space for the other rough who are willing to come in. I won't say waiting to come in, but willing to come in. S3P operators will never chase the person out so long as the person shows that they are willing to work with health agencies. Actually, more than 90% of them actually are extended beyond the two weeks. Our longest is actually uh, about one year plus, coming to two years. My plan is to save money to rent a room. Every month, 800. Now, every month, I earn about 500. Have you ever heard of this before? Like subsidised housing? No, I've never heard of subsidised housing before. We cannot go away thinking that uh, anybody who's on the street, I should give him a rental flat. Then you will end up with 16-year-old coming to you asking for a rental flat. A young person should be staying with his family. To me, it's very simple. Go home, apologise to your parents, say sorry, and go back to your room. If they are in danger right in the middle of the night, it's very, very inconvenient for them to go home. Yes, I'll put him in the shelter for the night. But the next day, I'll try to chase him home. I say, look, you must go home. You cannot be staying out. What if that is not an option? Then we will get the social workers to work with them. Hopefully, they can go to work, and then after, they can get an open market rental for that. I work a few part-time jobs. I work as banquet and the office job. So I've been working for eight months. My plan is to work on the shift. What are your requirements for a rental home? Not much. I'm checking a bit and I'm done to share. I working uh, this part-time job uh, two years plus. I'm doing the job uh, for packing uh, inside the giant. Uh. It's all my safety book. So, uh, safety must come first. Because doing the job, all the pellets so my leg uh, Some more are part-time. Who want to pay me? Nothing. Work is really important to me because I want to support my family in Bandung, Indonesia. My daughter's mom, family three only. Long way to go. That's why I must work. Send money. Huh? At least I'm um, 500 uh, for one month. In Singapore, so I also must pay my ex-wife uh, for maintenance money. Every month, uh, uh, 260. My son down there, Down syndrome. He's never worked. That's why every month, uh, I must give my ex-wife money. I never pay, I go jail. Ahmad nikah dengan awak punya janda 22 tahun. Janda minta cerai. Ahmad kena bayar 150,000. Habis tak ada duit. Jual rumah. Divorce sometimes leads to one party keeping the marital flat, the other party moving out. Homelessness occurs, right, or set in for this kind of family conflicts when people don't have the ability or resources to find alternative housing. The open rental market here in Singapore is 
very high. Margaruma, below Bebel Echen, below Arga Renda, Dulu Bli, Dual Apalapan, Tapi Macha Dual Dual Nam Koto, Rugi, Najual, Jitu Ruma, Seratol Yumo Poribo, Gatiama Nedanda, Bella Nak Bade, itu Ruma Banya Utang, Lagi Limo Poribo, tu Tengo Ada, Bela Bela Macho Chipia, Tak Nakap. Nak bayar duit agen pun tak ada duit lah. So I worked there too, so I think I worked a million times, like 311. I played four to five times a week. Servicing him, one gun. Far too fast, I think. From the time I reached there until the time that I very tired, then hell. Maybe like five, six hours. I don't know. My friends, so. So, how much do you spend typically on one gun a week? One week, 100. Four weeks, 400. I sometimes go there just to see them play. Or sometimes even borrow credits from them. I put wrong house power. Now I am packing. Because they see down there complain to my workplace. And then must move from down there. Everything must be clean first. New place to sleep. The cupboard. Give me on the bird. <laughs> Under three meters. Now. Now under the tree, uh, now I can sleep. Why don't you go into a shelter? I don't want to sleep down here. I can take care of the bird. I also scared. Uh, put the cat leave, leave it down there. Uh. After I go back, I see tomorrow I come, my bird lost. From the temple orchard, want to go down there. The bird cannot bring inside the bus. Ah, that's why this one is the problem. Man, but she need a chuchi baju. Chuchi baju cepat. Pasal sini chuchi enam dolar. Yang atas kaki kering tujuh dolar. Pasal Amat masalah dia amat tak ada rumah. Kalau nak dah cuci tak kasih kering dekat mana mama mana jemo. Amat tak ada tempat nak jemo. Kalau jemo nanti orang komplain. Sekarang masa Ahmad 
untuk tidur. Tapi kalau macam hujan lebat dengan hujan angin, separuh sini sikit semua basah. Jadi amat masuk dalam gini macam tidur. Tidur okey sampai pagi gini macam tidur. The type of rough sleepers that I think concerns me uh, are long-term rough sleepers. Long-term by homelessness research standards means more than one year. As people sleep outside for longer periods of time, they start to realise that actually I can get used to this life. The problem with this is then if you are used to something, and we're talking here about older population of people, then change becomes something that's scary. Jusu Madam Yeo is a stayer at our SGP at Gospel Light Church. This is the only women's shelter that we run. The stayers can only return after 8.30 p.m. and leave by 7 a.m. the next day. So the returning time at this shelter is a bit later than our other shelters uh, because the church uses the space for other like, programs and activities which may end a little bit later. Tato 没办法带time I was violent. First I used to join gang, so, so I was kicked out of the house. I have a curfew and I usually need to come back before 10.30. Then I didn't come back because I was staying somewhere far. Then I need to work also. My parents, they just don't understand that. Then after that, whenever I reach home, they don't open the door for me. Oh, I just stayed outside the house until the next morning. There was once I lost my whole wallet. My mom just said, Mom, okay, you don't make it by 10 30, you don't come home anymore. Yeah, I'm like, oh, okay, no. I decided to go to my godparents' house. And I found my godparents and then end up me getting kicked out of the house. First, I have nowhere else to go. I asked my sugar for help, please, and not come here. What time do you usually come back? Yeah, probably 2 or 3. Yeah. But what time are you supposed to come back? 10 30. You step here, then after you put your hand here, then you put your another leg over here. Then you jump over like you're sitting down on this bench. Then you jump down. Or probably put your both legs over here. And then you put down. 
We do have rules that we need our stairs to kind of abide by so that we can all run it smoothly. They have to come in by 10.30pm uh, because our shutter is actually quite noisy. If we have to open every time someone comes back, it really will just wake everyone up. And if you don't come for three days in a row without informing us, then we will take you out of the shelter because then our assumption is that you have a place to go. I'm broke a lot of Coming over the gate and sneaking in from the back door because it was late at night. Already. A lot of his thinking seems to be very rash. He doesn't really think of the consequences. He doesn't really respect the rules. And despite multiple times of reminding him and warnings, but he's still going against it. Thanks for meeting me on short notice. Ah. That is the key thing that I wanted to discuss with you today, is that uh, we will discharge him. 